Greetings, I'm back and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to go over one of the packages that I came back to my house after the holiday and there was a pile of everything that was uh, dropped in through the letterbox by uh, Royal Mail and one of those things um, is a little bit special because I want to use it for something and uh, I want to start working on it as soon as possible. So let's have a look at that item today and see what it is, what it does and um, if it's any good. So come and join me. And the item is here in this little bag. Here's the customs declaration. It says it's a gift. Commercial sample. Half a kilogram weight. Uh, not really. But um, yeah, I've opened it already because as I said there was quite a few items that came through. So I didn't know what is what. And wrapped in here in bubble wrap is a little gadget like this. So you may possibly recognize that it's um, if um, you have been browsing through deep dark parts of eBay, this could come up as a high voltage generator or high voltage power supply. Simple and nice circuit in order to generate high voltage in a range of uh, I think up to 400 volts. First let's have a closer look at the listing, then at the module, then we'll power it up. And here it is on eBay. It's a high voltage DC to DC boost converter, 8 to 32 volts to plus minus 45 to 390 volt ZVS capacitor charging. And it's got a number of pictures which, looking at uh, our module, yeah, it, uh, it does correspond to what was sent to us. Um, the potentiometer is uh, backwards on the picture or on here but that's not uh, an issue item number 181-727-721-989 and again if you're looking for this exact item just type in that number into eBay search box it will find you just this one five pounds 91 pence so almost six pounds so um, expensive as far as cheap uh, Chinese stuff goes but nonetheless um, this should be quite useful and here is the actual board and as you can see there isn't much on it, uh, at least on the top we've got the transformer, um, a heatsink and a device um, over here which has got markings RU7088R uh, which from what I've looked at it's just a 80 amp MOSFET. Um, there is a little jumper here to switch something on and off, an LED, three electrolytic caps, um, a 50k uh, multi-turn pot and two terminals. One is for the input voltage and one is for plus, ground and minus out. So this outputs um, symmetrical voltage. Um, so if you adjust this to, I don't know, 100 volts you'll get plus, you'll get zero and minus 100 and plus 100 and so on and so forth. The MOSFET here has got a silicon pad for electrical isolation but for thermal conductivity as well. So they've mounted it nicely using a proper um, proper spacer over here um, and the silly pad so for for some reason they can't allow the uh, the tab of the of the transistor to touch the heatsink possibly that's because it may have high voltage on the um, quite a bit perhaps but um, not sure why I presume this is on the primary side of the transformer but anyways um, here is the back of the unit and there's quite a bit more happening over here. Um, we've got um, 78L09, so that's a 9 volt voltage regulator. Um, that's going somewhere. Here is a automotive fuse in a unusual... I guess that's okay. Uh, just a fuse holder, which is... Just a... Yeah, a piece of metal. It looks like spade connectors. Um, that have been just soldered in and that uh, accepts uh, happily a small automotive fuse so that's uh, not a bad cheap solution um, and we've got two really big diodes on the output of the transformer going um, going to the outputs over here one to negative one to positive so clearly they're doing um, just a half wave rectification on here and we've got two devices which in all their evilness um, they have scraped the numbers off. It looks like someone uh, scratched it with a Dremel just to make the numbers not visible. 
Oh dear, um, let's see if we can decipher this. And here is a closer look at the board as you can see. Yeah, and the board it could be a little bit cleaner because there's quite a bit of flux residue all over the tracks and where it was soldered. Not the cleanest soldering job on one of the connectors I think it is. No, that's the actual transistor here, the MOSFET. Um, and interestingly, the transformer hasn't got all the pins soldered in. They've uh, been saving on soldering, so they've soldered only the ones that are necessary. Remaining ones are probably not connected to the transformer windings at all. Uh, but um, here you can see uh, the scratched off components um, in all, all of their evilness, what they've done over here. And this little three pin package as well is uh, scratched off, which is, I don't know. Um, okay, so let's um, let's see if we can freehand it maybe into slightly better lighting. Okay, here is one of the chips, and if we move it just at the right angle, you can see there is a U something maybe C three eight and something something A. So U question mark three eight question mark question mark A where the last two question marks are most likely digits and the first one is probably a letter. And let's look at the other chip. Excuse me, I'm freehanding both this and a flashlight at the same time. Oops, upside down. There we go. And that's L something something 393. LM393? Okay. Uh, so this seems to be an op-amp and after a quick look the previous one is a regulator controller for a, a PWM controller for DC to DC converters so that kind of fits the bill so I'm not sure why, why they um, actually have gone to trouble to get this all obscured um, let's have a look at this uh, three pin package uh, no that's a lost cause you can see how much residue of um, flux is left on the board. This 3-pin package, what that is, and I'm not too sure. Transistor some sort of probably, or a diode, one of the two. But anyways, um, let's, uh, let's plug it in and see what it actually does. Okay, here is the setup to test it. So I've got this connected with some crocodile clips um, onto my power supply and set to 12 volts and 1.2 amps current limit the fuse over here is 10 amps so I don't know I figure 1 amp to start with will be reasonable multimeter here the common electrode of connected to the ground on the output and then we'll just be able to probe left and right to see what is happening let's make the output on Okay, output is on, we've got the LED on. Okay, it's showing minus 50 volts and minus 48 and plus 46. Let's try to twist the pot. Okay, we're going up. 50, 60. Come on, 70, 80, let's see how high can we get, 150, okay, that's getting exciting, well, that was rather quick, so it seems I had to do quite a lot of turns initially to get from say 60 to um, 80 but then towards the end of the scale um, it goes really quickly it starts boosting up to well, each each quarter turn is like 20 30 volts and we are at 392 volts and yeah I hear the uh, pot clicking so that's the end of the scale so it's plus 393 and minus 412 so it's a little bit gener more generous on the negative rail uh, but let's see what can we do with this 
Ok, I've connected a couple of uh, lengths of copper wire to the output and I've got a suitable 47 microfarad 450 volt cap. And we've got negative here, this should be the negative, this should be positive, so let's switch it on. So, power on, the meter is still connected, so it's showing us 412 volts. So, if I just apply... Oh! That's exciting. Okay, we've got 412 volts. It takes it a moment. This most definitely is not capable of doing quite a lot of current. But... Bear with me, I need to handle this capacitor quite carefully now. As so as you can see, I've just switched the power off and it's very slowly discharging. I'll just help it. And let's see the cap. Woof! That's exciting. It's done it even twice. Now mind you, you shouldn't discharge capacitors like this because they don't really like it. But, yeah. Okay, let's try that again. So, power on yeah 412 something and one more time um, if you're interested quite satisfying if you put your finger across something like this this will hurt uh, this will hurt a lot actually let's see um, I forgot to mention, right now the device, it's, in, it's set to maximum voltage output, it's at 12 volts, it's taking just under 70 to 100 milliamps. Now, when I start charging this capacitor, so let's do it one more time and I'm going to measure the current on the input. Uh, it for a brief moment it did hit the limit of 1.25 amps that I've got set so potentially it will take a little bit more than that uh, probably two or three amps so probably 20 watts 20 watt ish output so at 400 volts maybe 50 milliamps or so so it seems to be doing the business I'm relatively happy with this. With, because it does plus minus uh, voltage on the output, it's um, quite possible that um, you can get up to just around, just over 800 volts out of this, which is quite nice. And you could easily charge a bank of capacitors to 800 volts. Now I've discharged it already, so it's, it's reasonably safe to handle. Um, but yeah, um, there you go. A nice little module handy for some mischief. mischief. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this uh, first video of the 2017 year Anno Domini and subscribe for more random stuff. For this one that's it. So take care.